and said she is cancer free. Come on, somebody ought to just, hey, look at God. Look at God. Glory. Hey. Hallelujah. And if God can do it for her, then the same God that did it for her, God can do it. Come on, somebody holler and say, God can do it. Somebody holler and say, God can do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I said, God can do it. I said, God can do it. I, I said, God can do it. Y'all didn't want to come and have church. I said, God can do it. I said, God can do it. Let me stop. But God can do it. I feel like giving him a God can do it praise. I'm going. Woo. God can do it. Ain't no secret to what God can do. What he's done for others. I know he can. All right. Let me let me contain my composure but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me my soul cries out But when I think, when I think, whew, all right, I know. All right, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me stop. All right, I'm gonna move y'all on. Yep, I'm gonna move y'all. All right, God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Um, what else I had to tell y'all? Um. But, but before I move, somebody just throw your hand up and say, God can do it. Yes, sir. Uh, God can do it. All right. Listen, I, I, I need somebody that really believes God can do it. Jump on your feet right now and for 30 seconds, just come on and give God the best praise you can give him. Come on. If you want to leave, you better leave. Go get 
bless you. Y'all forgive me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bless God for you. All right. <laughs> Woo. Woo. Oh, yeah. Woo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. But God can do it. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Woo. Lord, have mercy. That's, oh. Hallelujah. Oh. <laughs> Thank God today. Sorry, we just sorry I had to do a commercial break. But, but God can do it. Lord have mercy. Praise the Lord. Um, good God. Um, whatever else I was going to say, I'm going to wait to the end. Uh, Deacon Debbie Gibson, come on and pray for us. Ain't no sense in me singing nothing. Y'all, uh, while she's coming. Debit machine is down, so if you ain't got no, if you if you got cash, go on and give it to the financial table. So Deacon Debbie Gibson, do me a favor, pray for the offering, youth, and the sick. And the message was to inspire me. And the message said, Hallelujah! And it has the Lion of Judah, yes. of the Lion. And it said that this devil came in and whispered in my ear, you're not going to make it through the storm. <laughs> he said, but I'm a child of the most high God, and I am the storm. <laughs> that beautiful song came in and said, I'm on the battlefield yeah. for my Lord. Yeah. And I promised him that I would serve him till I die. So I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. So I'm coming today. I'm not nice today. <laughs> I'm fighting in the battlefield. And my weapons are not of guns and the things of this world. My weapons are of the Lord.
pray the blood, Lord God, over everything that you might have in your hearts and mind right now that it is not in line with the will of God. I plead the blood over, as I said, sickness and pain. I plead the blood over your thoughts that are causing you harm. I plead the blood over the devil's ability to whisper in your ear. I plead the blood over anything, anything that is not of him. And then I ask, I speak life. I speak life to your healing. I speak life to your mind getting regulated in the fine thoughts. I plead blood over your ability to stand in faith, Lord God, and remember who's on your side. I plead the blood over the negative, but I speak life to all that's in him. And I do it in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you inspired us all day have already inspired us and we have to use the weapons that are powerful the weapons that sometimes will not be seen there's a battle so i also ask god father god those angels that you have to minister unto us lord god i ask that you send them out lord god right now in the name of jesus Send them out to fight the spiritual battle. Hallelujah. On all our hearts and minds in this world, Lord God, I send the angels of God to build a spiritual fence around all that we pray for that is you. I ask that the angels of God would go before us and give us traveling mercy and favor. I thank you, Lord God, for everyone. All your children. I pray, Lord God, and I speak life to them. But it's true. Now, Father God, we ask that you bless They need you, Lord God. They're still growing in their faith, Lord God, and they're looking unto us. So help us to be all that we need to be. Show our love, Lord God. Use our gifts so that we are ministering our gifts in church and all over the world. Help us, Lord God, to be everything. So when our children see us, not only in this church and sanctuary, but when our children see us as we live our daily lives, they'll be inspired by our love. They'll be inspired by our wisdom. They'll be inspired about our ability to stand in the storms of life. Hallelujah, glory God. And we will not bow down to sickness. We will not bow down to pain. We will not bow down uh, to anything that's not you. Bless us, Father. And as I end my prayer, early this morning, there's an 815 prayer line, a prayer call, sir. And Miss Williams, our first lady in Mary got on the phone and said, I am still holding on. Hallelujah. I'm still holding on. This year, I'm going to be 101 years old. And she said, I'm still holding on. Amen. Glory to God. So we thank you, Lord God, that you are new in us. And then also, be able to give the testimony, I'm still holding on with love. Amen.
Listen. The storm is raging all around. Satan is trying to pull me down. But Lord, you told me in your word I could abide. So stretch forth your mighty hand and hold back, hold back tonight. Come on, church. strength to fight ah yes I'll do your will if you yes sir oh lord I love your name
Can somebody wave your hands at me and say, I'll be all right. Mm. Do I have some witnesses that can testify, I'll be all right? I'm not here. Yes, sir. Cry some tears, but I'll be all right. I'm going to be all right. Shia. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you. <laughs> That's our testimony. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. So, <laughs> now, dear God, we thank you. Ah, uh, yes. Now, God, we praise you for the word of the Lord. Uh, thank you <clears throat> for meeting us in this service, lifting us and encouraging us. Thank you. Now, in these next few fleeting moments, may we feel your presence in the preaching moment. We ask for the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit to be present with us, and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank y'all. Y'all just ruined my whole plan. I was trying to get y'all out early, but that ain't happening. So, sorry. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to uh, preachers, God bless you, in and in, in the pulpit and in the audience, uh, officers, choir, lottie dotty, musicians, everybody. <laughs> Lord have mercy. My mama is here. God bless your mother. Uh, uh, she, her and I, she, she's, we, we're going back. And when we leave service here, I think she made some cabbage. I hope she made some cabbage. <laughs> Uh, but I'm, I'm going to go home. She's coming with me, and we're going to, I'm going to fry some chicken. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm going to fry, I'm going to fry some chicken. And, and uh, praise the God. All right. <laughs> Let me preach a little bit. Um, I'm closing a series a day. You all, I've been in for the last couple of weeks, entitled, The Benefits of Being a Believer. Last week I talked a little bit about, I talked about the benefit of the church. We all need to be in church. Uh, but I, today I want to talk about one more thing, which is 
preacher. You all, we all need a preacher. Um, and um, I want to just establish something and put some things in perspective today. Um, God has sent us some additional preachers. And so I want to talk about, I want to frame this discussion a little bit. And, and talk about what their responsibility will be and it's going to be to them. But I'm also going to try to talk to us in a larger sense about what that means for us today. All right. And then I'm going to stay in Luke for a little bit. Uh, chapter three, because there's something in here. Uh, there's some is in there. So gospel of Luke, chapter number three, gospel of Luke, chapter number three, gospel of Luke, chapter number three. Uh, <clears throat> Lord have mercy, and hey, y'all talk back to me, we'll get in, we'll try to push through this. Thank you. Lord have mercy. <clears throat> also Luke chapter 3, I want to begin at verse uh, 1, and since we in church, I ought to read the Bible, so we're going to read the first six verses <laughs> of this text. <laughs> Uh, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, uh, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, Herod, Herod being tre tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip tetrarch of the region of uh, Itunia, and Trachonitis, and Licinius tetrarch of Ab. La knee. If I didn't get it right, hooked on finance didn't work for me. <laughs> In the high priesthood of Ananias and Caiaphas, the word of the Lord came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he went into the, all the region about the Jordan, uh, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. As it is written in the book of Isaiah, the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his pathways straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight. The tough places made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of our God. God bless you. You may be seated. For the time that's uh, mine for preaching, as we conclude this series and stay in this book or in this chapter, I want to talk a little bit from this thought, a word in the wilderness. A word in the wilderness. A word in the wilderness. Tasha, I think I need to begin this sermon by stating some obvious facts. Uh, there are two times in life, or I suspect approximately two times, that one should celebrate. Uh, the first instance of celebration should occur when you are born into the world. You ought to celebrate the fact that you are here. Uh, that God allowed you to come into this world and to live. But a second reason I think that we ought to be excited, there ought to be some jubilation, some excitement, is because, or is when you discover why you were born. You should discover, brothers and sisters, you should celebrate that you are born, but you also should celebrate the fact that you have discovered why you were born. I submit, brothers and sisters, that all of us, aside from the call of salvation, being called out of darkness into the marvelous light of the gospel, I submit that all of us have a calling on our lives. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. I said all of us have a calling on our lives. God did not just create you to just meander and waste your time. Uh, God created you to live 
and impactful life. And you should uh, spend your life trying to discern and discover what that plan and purpose is. Uh, we saw an example of that this week when we heard the news about uh, Kyrie Willis who uh, played for the Indian Indianapolis Colts who decided to take a retirement from playing football and decided to pursue ministry. He had discovered his call in life and said, hey, I'm going to follow that call. A calling rightfully defined is something you cannot help doing. Uh, I, 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 it, it is something that you cannot, that it wakes you up in the morning. It, it causes you a sense of restlessness. And even when you don't fulfill, feel like fulfilling your purpose and your call, uh, you can't you, you can't get away from it. I submit that all of us got a call in life. Can I get a witness? That, that theme of calling permeates this text. Uh, we come to a figure by the name of John the Baptist. Somebody shout John the Baptist. John the Baptist is an unusual uh, character, brothers and sisters. This brother, this gentleman, had an unusual birth. If you read Luke chapter 1, uh, he was born to some senior citizens. Uh, they were past childbearing years. They, they weren't expected. There was no expectation uh, for them to have children. Elizabeth and Zechariah, that is. They were, there was no expectation for them to have children. Yet God comes to Zechariah. And Zechariah couldn't believe it. He, he come, God comes to Zechariah and says, uh, you and Elizabeth going to have some children or going to have a child in your old age. God is simply telling Zechariah and Elizabeth, I know what is said that cannot be done, but I'm going to defy the odds and I'm going to do what people say cannot be be done. I'm going to do the impossible. In fact, let me pause parenthetically and just preach here a little bit and say this, that God can still do the impossible. Can I get a witness in here? I, I said God can still do the impossible. We still serve a God that can defy the doctors. We still serve a God that can blow your mind. Can I get somebody that can testify on this Sunday morning that we serve a God that has the power? Have you any rivers that seem uncrossable? Have you any mountains that you just can't tunnel to? Let me just testify. God specializes in things that seem impossible possible and he will do come on church what no other power can can I get somebody that can testify God specializes let, let, let me get let me try this on this side I said God specializes that ain't my side let me try this side can I get somebody on this side that can testify God specializes uh, that ain't the side can, quiet. can you help me I said God specializes God special Lies is, and the Bible makes clear that so God allows Elizabeth uh, to have a child in her old in their old age. What's beautiful about this text is that when Mary, who was also given a news of a child in the midst of impossibility, uh, Mary comes to Elizabeth in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, and she greets uh, Elizabeth. Now, when the sound of the salutation of Mary hits the ear drum of Elizabeth a prenatal praise breaks out in the womb and John begins to leap in his mama's womb and the Bible says that he was filled with the Holy Ghost I, I said I said John was filled yeah with the Holy Ghost y'all don't know y'all come on y'all gonna help me preach this I said John was filled with the Holy Ghost so let me let me do something else here with this text. Uh, John was uh, he's the son of a high priest. Uh, Zachariah was a high priest. Now it was expected from children of a high priest that they indeed would get married and then produce children who in turn would then become a high priest. But John says I'm not going to do that. He defies he does a radical transformation and he goes 
out into the wilderness and he lives with probably the Qumran community. These were individuals who lived in the wilderness. They rejected societal life and they rejected established religion. And so John goes and John says, I'm going to live a separate life from the wider culture. But brothers and sisters, note what the text says in chapter number three, God comes in at the right time in history. Note the text. He, in the book, in this chapter three, Luke chronicles or he lists some political and religious leaders. He lists political and religious leaders and he does that to locate, to situate the work of God in human history. What he's literally trying to teach us is this, that God is at work in the world, that God has not divorced the world, but that God is in control of the world. Can I get a witness in here? Let me say that again. I said God, God's got the whole world in his hand. Let me talk to some of y'all who are fool up to believe that God is not concerned about what's going on in this world, but can, can I remind you, God's got the whole world. Come on, talk back to me in here. He's got the whole world in his hand. The gun violence God's got it in his hand the inflation God's got it in his hand the, the rising gas prices God's got it in his hand the gun violence God's got it in his hand the injustice the the lackadaisical politicians God's got it in God's say can I get somebody that can celebrate with me uh, that God's got the whole world uh, in his hand uh, and even when I don't see it uh, even when I don't understand it I'm so glad that God is still at work in the world. Yes, sir. That's I'm so glad, brothers and sisters. That's why I don't fall, I don't falter, I don't fray, I don't fret because I know that God's got the whole world in God's hand. And so after he chronicles, after he chronicles these political and religious officials, he says, verse 2, the word. Somebody shout the word. Now, there are two terms that are used in the Old Testament. The first term is logos. Somebody shout logos. Logos, logos means the written word. But in this text, the word is, the New Testament term is rhema. Somebody shout rhema. Rhema means the expressed word, the spoken word that God knows how to come at the right time in history. <laughs> and can I get somebody in here that can testify that God has a regard, God knows the right time to come in history. Yes, sir. The text says that the word comes. Watch this. Now, God does not operate in the world outside of human instruments. The Bible says that the word came to John. Is that in your Bible? I said, is that in your Bible? I said, the Bible says that the word came to John. I said, whenever God wants to work in the world, God always used human individuals. If you don't believe me, I said, God always used human individuals. How do you know that? Let's look at the scriptures. When God wanted to have an ark built for the saving of his house, he called Noah. When God wanted to liberate the people from Egyptian bondage, he called Moses. When God wanted to give the people the promised land, he gave Joshua. When God wanted to liberate the people from Philistine tyranny, he called Deborah. When God wanted to have a temple built, he called Solomon. I'm trying to tell you that God uses people and Watch this. These individuals, they had their failures. They had their flaws. They were jacked up from the flow of, but God still used them. Let me pause right through here and do a survey in this church. Can I get somebody that can be happy? Hallelujah. Happy. Thank you, Jesus. Glad that God uses you in spite of you. Come on, I know you say, say the Holy Ghost, feel five, baptized, got Jesus on your mind. Won't, I won't take nothing for your journey now. But I need some real folk that can testify. Pastor, I am jacked up from the flow. Of, uh, Pastor, I got issues and tissues. Uh, but God still uses me. Uh, come on, I know you got, listen, I know, I know you, I know you can shout good on Sunday. But some of you got a good cussing spirit too. Uh, uh huh. Yes, indeed, all of us. God, can I get somebody in here that can testify? He uses me uh, in spite of me. 
Yes, sir. He uses me in spite of me. Uh, even in my low downness, he uses me. Uh, when I don't always act right, he uses me. Uh, when I'm broke, busted, disgusted, can't be trusted, he still uses me. Uh, I don't know why he loved me. Uh, I don't know why he cared. Uh, I don't even know why he sacrificed his life. But oh, I'm glad. Uh, so glad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can't shout on nothing. You ought to shout that he uses you. Come on, the fact that you're able to do what you do in ministry, don't you ever get the big head. The reason why you are comfortable where you are, where you are, if you are trusty, it's because God put you there. If you're a deacon, God put you there. If you are an usher, God put you there. If you're on hospitality, God put you there. If you own this here choir, God put you there. Don't you get the big head. Don't you get arrogant to believe that you all that plus some. But all of us are jacked up. <laughs> I'm jacked up I said I'm jacked up y'all I, I got some problems y'all and, and you catch me on the wrong day the problem will just show right up but I'm so glad that God still uses me I'm trying to push it but God uses me I, I gotta push it God still uses me me, me. comes to John he knows John's temperament. He knows John's flaws and errors. He knows that John has an attitude, but God still works that. That, that God uses that in his divine intentionality. God uses that. <laughs> note the text. Note, note, note the text. The Bible says that God comes to John. The word of, word of God comes to John in the wilderness. Somebody shout wilderness. A solitary place and a private place. A place by himself I, 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 the first reflection I want to bring on this is this brothers and sisters in order for you to have an effective public ministry you got to have a private encounter with God come on come on come on come on with me here come on before you can have a public I, I, and that's why folk folk I, I just I understand how some folk just want to jump out in ministry and have not had an encounter with God Whew. Lord have mercy I feel like preaching but brothers and sisters you can't lead people where you're not going uh, if you oh. excuse me if you haven't had connection with God you can't lead me uh, if you don't have a prayer life you can't lead me uh, if you don't have no word life you can't teach me uh, you gotta have a public your, your private life brothers and sisters you gotta have a private relationship before you can have a public ministry You don't believe me. You, you don't believe me. <laughs> but, but brothers and sisters, before, before God could use Noah in the public, he had to have some private time. Bef before God could use Moses in the public, he had to get him on the backside of the desert. Before God could use Joshua, he had to take him in the backside. Brothers and sisters, before God could use Deborah, he had to take her uh, in behind closed doors. Before God could use David or Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, or Obadiah, Amos, come on, let me call the role, Elijah, Elisha. God had to take them in the private so that God could work on them brothers and sisters I'm so glad for my private time because God works on me in the private he speaks to me in the private he builds me up in my private time boy I got Woo. and watch this watch this can I put it can I put this caveat here when you have had a pi private encounter with God, don't nobody have to pump you up in public worship. You see, if, if the praise leader got to pump you up, y'all noticed earlier today, I didn't get behind the mic the same because at the, at the end of the day, if I got to lead you in worship every Sunday, come on, if you don't have a flashback for yourself, if you don't have a cop, if you don't have a relationship, for listen, when I come to church, I'm already warmed up. I'm already on fire. I don't need nobody to light my fire. Just look at somebody next to you and say, neighbor, I'm already warmed up. Matter of fact, don't touch me because I might burn you up. Because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Come on. 
don't touch this. That's what he, MC Hammer said, can't touch this. Yeah, yeah, and then you ought to tell somebody, listen, don't, don't, don't touch me. Don't, don't touch me. Don't, don't touch me. Because the Lord been talking to me. Uh, and if I'm in my little space, don't touch me. Uh, let me leave me there alone. Uh, because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, uh, and all oh, he's... Hold on, hold on. Note the text. The Bible says, the Bible says, the, the, the Bible says, the word comes to him in the wilderness. Unimportant place. In the wilderness. Obscure place. In the wilderness. Nobody expects that. That lets me know, brothers and sisters, that greatness is not determined by where you come from, but greatness is determined by the great God who calls you to be great. Listen, brothers and sisters, whether you come from 60th Street, 33rd, and Diamond from the projects, I don't care where you come from, you are still great because the God who called me said, Greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. Mama. Come on, come on. Come on. I didn't come. Listen, you may not come from the best house, but don't let that determine your because God can bring greatness out of unexpected places. Yes, sir. Let me say it again. I said, God can bring greatness out of unexpected places. I'm a witness. I said, God can bring greatness out of unexpected places. How do you know, preacher? Look at me. I was a little nappy headed Negro, but God still uses me. God still picked me out. And watch this. God will use where I came from as a testimony. See, y'all miss me. I said God will use where you came from as a testimony that, listen, if God can do it for me, he can. You're talking about let's go. All right. <laughs> oh. I got six minutes. <laughs> I got six minutes. Lord have mercy. But, but he, he, he uses me. My, my greatness is not determined by where I come from. But it's determined by the great God who called me. Don't, don't, don't let anybody tell you that you are your environment. You just came from there. But you're not there. Can, you are not that. Don't let anybody identify you or stereotype you. You are who God says you are. Can I talk to some brothers? Brothers, I don't care where you came from. I don't care what your background, your history has been. You are not that background. You are great. You are people of favor. And you man up. You stand up. And you be all that God has called you to be. All right, all right, the word of God, verse two, word of God came, verse two, to John, but verse three, the word of God came from John. You miss me. All right, let me, let me say that again. Verse two, the word of God came to John, but verse three, the word of God came, y'all miss me, come on, y'all. I said verse two, the word of God came to John but in verse 3 the word of God came what verse 2 the word of God came but verse 3 the text came verse 2 the word of God came uh, but in verse number 3 the word of God came uh, watch the text the word that, that word preaching John went around the Jordan preaching John went around the Jordan preaching the word preaching in that context is the word carissio. Somebody shout carissio. Shout again, carissio. Carissio brings up the image of a herald. 
someone who is a commissioned by a king or royalty to communicate a simple message. Uh, the, 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 it the, is the idea that this person has to have the proper voice this, and this person is responsible to say what the king said. This person is not, uh, cannot alter, cannot deviate, but must say hey, what the king said. We've got preachers here, brothers and sisters. We have been commissioned as heralds. Uh, and the preachers that are here today, let me just charge you, whenever the Lord releases you in this church uh, uh, to do ministry, uh, make sure you say what God said. Uh, we don't... We don't want your opinion. We don't want your theological axioms. When, we, when you come and stand, and let me also talk to my deacons, because I got some deacons who share the word. Deacons, you are also heralds, which means when you step up behind this pulpit, you better say what God said. Let me talk to some of my other members who are lay members who proclaim the word. Don't you come up here and giving us no fluff, but say what God said. Can I get somebody here that can tell testify listen our responsibility is to say what God said that, 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 because let me say this many of you come here on Sunday mornings have been broken many of you have had bad issues throughout the week and when you come here on Sunday mornings you don't need a clown in the pulpit come on I'm, I'm preaching today. Yeah. You, 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 listen, I'm not no clown. I didn't come here to entertain you. My responsibility is to tell you what God said. And if you don't like it, I really don't care. Brothers and sisters, my responsibility is to say what God said. Now, 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 now. Notice what John, John went about preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. His preaching didn't give forgiveness of sin, but it pointed to the one that could give forgiveness of sin. It simply means that John said, listen, I'm preaching this word to you. Now, whether you receive it or not, but uh, my goal, my job is to spiritually prepare you for the coming of the Lord Jesus. Note the text. He says, note the text. He says, prepare, verse four, the way of the Lord make straight his path now when he uses that word prepare the image here whenever a king was traveling down the desert whenever the king was traveling down the desert he would have workmen going before him the the job of these workmen were to clear the road of debris so that the king could travel down a smooth road as heralds of the gospel as those who have been called out by Jesus Christ we are to be we are to be workmen and work women who prepare the, to clear the debris brothers and sisters all I'm trying to tell you my responsibility is to clear the debris in this house and our responsibility so that when the Lord comes listen the Lord can have God's will can I get a witness in here that, 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 I, I, my responsibility is to prepare the way but my responsibility is not to get in the way oh. 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 I feel like preaching today I said my responsibility is to prepare the way not get in the way how do I get in the way when I try to force you to transform listen my responsibility ain't to perform to force you to transform I'm just simply here to deliver some mail and let God do the work okay listen note the text you don't believe me look, look at the text look at the text look at the text he says verse 4 I prepared the, the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord make straight his path but look at verse number 5 he says uh, uh, every mountain and every every hill shall be filled every mountain and hill rather will be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight the rough places made smooth that ain't me doing it that's God doing it in other words as I do my job God will come in and do God's job. Can I get some, Can I get some? My time is up, but I got to tell this. That's why folk, I don't get mad when folk get mad at me at my preaching. 
I, I don't get upset when folk don't like what I say. Watch this, because uh, I'm just delivering the mail. I'm not the Holy Ghost. My responsibility is just to give the mail. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, ain't my problems. Uh, and can I help somebody? Whenever you witness for the gospel, whenever you tell the truth to somebody, stop trying to force people to see what you see. If they don't see it, just leave it be. Because watch this, you ain't the Holy Ghost. Uh, let me close my Bible. I said you ain't the Holy Ghost. Uh, and when you go out and witness for people, witness to people, and they reject the message of the gospel, listen, that ain't your responsibility uh, to try to make them see it. Uh, for if our gospel is here, uh, it is here to them who are lost, uh, in whom the God of this world uh, has blinded their minds, uh, lest they should see Jesus Christ, who is the image of the loving God. Uh, brothers and sisters, it's God who does the work. I'm done. I'm done. I'm tired now. Uh, I'm, I'm tired now. I ain't need nothing this morning. I'm tired now. But brothers and sisters, my, my responsibility, all I'm going to do is preach, y'all. That's all I'm doing right now. That's all I'm going to do is preach. If you like what I say, that's okay. I'm going to still preach. Because if when you give the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior has come, be not dismayed if people don't believe you. Be not dismayed if they talk about you. Be not dismayed if they scandalize you. Be not dismayed if they reject you. Be not dismayed if they if they scandalize your name but he'll understand and say well done can I get a witness and so my commitment to you peoples and the commitment of these preachers and the commitment of these deacons is that we gonna preach the word can I get the preachers to stand with me can I get the preachers that can wave your hand today and say we are gonna preach the word deacons wave your hands and say we are gonna proclaim the word yes can I get everybody in the room and say we are gonna tell the word yes on Sunday I'm gonna tell you let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me for Jesus declared in my father's house are many mansions when I get up on Sunday morning I'm gonna tell you that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty I'll say of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress my God and I him will will I trust I'm gonna get up and testify that even the youth shall faint and grow weary the young shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they're gonna mount up on wings as eagles they're gonna run and not get weary they're gonna walk and not faint when I get up on Sunday morning I'm gonna tell you that one Friday Jesus was hung up for our hang up he died he died I said he died come on y'all let's have church now can you wave your hand and say Jesus he died he died he died he died but I ain't gonna stop there but early 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 Sunday morning he got up he got up can you shout yes yeah 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 when I get up I'ma testify now unto him that is able to keep you from falling he's able 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 to present your falling for the present of his glory both 
now, forever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever. Amen. I'm done. But when I stand up, I'm going to say what God said. Y'all hear me? When these preachers get up, they're going to say what God said. When these deacons get up, they're going to say what God said. Because when y'all go out and share the word, y'all got to say what God said. And you can't worry about people's feelings. Can I say something, y'all? Y'all know I'm, 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 I'm known to say whatever I want to say, and I'm going to say it today. Ministry ain't for punks. I said ministry and excuse the ebonics, but ministry ain't for punks. There are too many sellouts in the gospel. Gonna sell out for money. I ain't, I'm not trying to be popular. I'm trying to be impactful. Because souls are on the line. People stand between heaven and hell week after week. And I don't have time to play games. Do y'all hear me? I ain't got time for that. And if all you're going to do is play games, don't mount this pulpit. Because I'll sit you down. Because my responsibility as the shepherd of this house to guard the flock. I'm not letting dangerous stuff get in here. Come on, deacons, come on. I'm done. Everybody can't come behind this pulpit. The Lord, the Lord said something to me this week. I was talking to my pastor yesterday, contrary to, and I, can I say this one thing? I'm done. Every pastor needs to have a pastor. So just so y'all know, I still have a pastor that I'm accountable to. A good one. And one thing I learned, my pastor, we were talking yesterday. I said, my responsibility is to lead both by precept and example. I told dad, I'd, you know, now, uh, I guess I'm now gaining the title as senior pastor. Because at one time I hated to sing the word senior pastor. <laughs> yeah, but now, you know, I, because I have preachers under me, I now have to assume that role. And so, with that responsibility, as it has been before, but I now see the necessity of it even more, is to live right in front of y'all. Y'all can't see me do everything. Can I get a witness? I got to live wisely in this world to let you know, watch this, that it, it pays to live right. Come on, somebody. I said it pays to live right. I'm not straddling the fence. I'm not after the money when I do this. God told me, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything else that I need, God will add it to me. 
Doors of the church are open. I'm done. Uh, um, there might be someone here who does not know Jesus. Listen, if you were to die today, where are you going? If you can't say with certainty that you would be in the presence of the Lord Jesus, I invite you, I'm sorry, to get to know Jesus today. Someone say, preacher, how do I do that? You do that, first of all, by realizing that all of us have sinned, come short of the glory of God. And because of our sin, we're separated eternally from God. But the good news is that God did for us what we could not do for ourselves. God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. And he says, if you would believe in your heart, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you're here and you have not trusted Jesus, I invite you, come on and get saved today. Come on, get saved today. Come on, come on, come on. I'm talking to you online, come on. Just say, I want to get to know Jesus. If you're here, you know you need to get to know Jesus, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Hold to God's unchanging hand, come on. You're not saved, come on. Come on. The second call is for anybody here. Well, before we do that, those who come watching this service, later on, you won't have the benefit of the live stream, but you're gonna see a prayer come up. I invite you to repeat that prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Realize I'm a sinner by nature and I'm under condemnation, but I believe you died. We're buried, but early Sunday morning, got it with all power. Except you as Savior and Lord and will follow you. Thank you for coming into my life. If you repeat that prayer, my friend, you are saved. God has, is doing the work. Now, the second call is for somebody here who is not a part of a church, but you want to join this church. Listen, I'm going to let you go, but listen, you need to be a part of a place where you can grow in grace. Now, this ain't a perfect church, and I'm not a perfect pastor. However, we're trying to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you're here and you want to get to know Jesus, you want to be a part of this church, come on. Just say it in this, watching me online, just say I want to be a part of this church. Come on. Come on. Come by letter. Candidate of baptism, Christian experience. Watch care. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You ought to build your turn on hold. Come on. We're getting out of here. You ought to hold to his. Yes, sir. Everyone standing. We're getting out of here. Turn. God bless you. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope you all enjoy worship today. You all enjoy worship today? Amen. God bless you. Listen, just a few things I want to share with you. First off, this week, uh, Reverend Mason Bland is teaching Bible enrichment for me. Uh, I'm actually filling in at New Hope on Tuesday and Thursday because my father had eye surgery and so I'm teaching for him and so I've asked Reverend Mason Bland to teach on Wednesday nights. Please, uh, please be a part of that. Uh, sign in on Facebook and he'll, he's teaching the word. Second thing, um, everybody, who in here needs prayer? Everybody. All right. So if all y'all need prayer, all y'all need to be on the conference call praying. Come on, we can't talk about we need power. It's almost all about you need power, but you won't connect to the power source. 
So prayer at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. I'm challenging everybody for the next month. I need to see 50% attendance on prayer call. You can choose one or the other. 6 a.m., 6 p.m. The prayer the prayer call number is in the program. And you ain't got to pray. You ain't got to be out loud, but just pray in your heart. But sign on and pray. Amen? Amen. All right. The, the next thing is this. Sun, on Saturday at 10 a.m., we're going to have our business meeting. Now, we're going to be very quick because pastor's anniversary is on a fish fry. And I want all of those who can be a part of that fish fry um, on this coming Saturday. Listen. Uh, it's going to be some good fish, some good food. So look in that program. You can see Sister Angie and her committee. They'll make sure that they take good care of you. Amen? Amen. But I need y'all. Now, let me just explain what business meetings, all, business meetings are for. Business meetings are a time for the church as a whole to get together and make decisions together. Now, it is for all members in good standing. Now, if you want to know what good standing means, come see me at the service. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. You need to know what a good standing is. Come see me. Can I say it? Say it. Here's what good standing means. Good standing means that you come to church, whether online or in person. Good standing means that you are a regular tither. Hello. I just wanted to make sure there was no confusion. All right. I'm going to leave y'all alone. Let me stop. Um, but keep that in mind. Next week is Sunday school anniversary. And they said five, but it's actually ten. So if you can just pull out another extra five, I'm going to give my ten. I'm going to give my 10. I need all those who can follow me. Give me give $10 to Sunday school. Those who can. Those who can. If you can commit to giving $10. In fact, I'm going to go above and beyond and give 20. So I need everybody who can give me uh, leadership. Leaders. Leaders. Lead. Let me see all leaders. Those who are leaders. Yes. Leaders. $10. All of y'all. All y'all. All y'all. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All y'all. And everybody else, thank you. All right, thank you, y'all. Let me tell you something. I like to have fun here. And I, I don't want y'all to ever think we are about money. We're not. We just, it takes money to run this thing here. Y'all see this air and, and all this other stuff. It just takes money to do this. And so, you know, and I said this at the 8 o'clock service too. For those who are going on vacation, because some folks just already went. If you go on vacation, please remember peoples in your going. Will you remember peoples, Baptist, in your going? Amen. Thank you. all I love you. Give yourselves a big God bless you. All right. Um, Reverend Blanche, come on and give us the benediction. I'm tired now. Didn't our hearts burn? Yes, indeed. Amen always say this is a Bible teaching church. Amen. It equips us to go out. Amen? Amen? So let's stand as we get ready to go out. Fathers, I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Stay safe. Everybody say Everybody Everybody say Let the church say, let the church say, let the church say, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day. 
thank you for the message that was given to us from our beloved pastor, pastor senior pastor, Eric J. Lynn Good. God, thank you for letting us be a Bible teaching church. So when we go out to minister, it's not about me or you, but it's all about him. So again, my father, we ask you to bless all the fathers, the uncles that had been fathers, the grandfathers that had been, taken the place of the fathers. Let them enjoy their day today. We're still praying for our beloved friends, Pastor Banks, our own beloved Minister Kersey, our own beloved Minister Huzzy and their families. God, we thank you for the spirit that was in this place today. God, we ask you to protect them as they go out into these mean and hateful streets. But God, we know that you covered us and we're so grateful. Now may the sweet spirit of the Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide with us now, hence, and forevermore. Let us all say, Amen. Hold on. Bless the food. Bless the food in Jesus' name. Amen. I did it at the end.